Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So many years ago, in fact, a couple of decades ago, I created a dating website and I developed this thing with Java. I had my own Java framework and I developed what I developed it with my Java framework, which was essentially a Java Pojo Servlets JSP framework. So for you Java nerds out there, you might find that interesting. So I developed the dating app. And I did it just to explore Java a little bit more deeply. And much to my surprise, it started gaining traction. More and more people. First, it was a few hundred and a few thousand people. At some point, at one point, I had 17,000 members in the dating app and it was growing. Now, what happened though was something totally unexpected. So what happened is my dating app got invaded by swingers, swingers, North American swingers, more or less, mostly U.S. swingers. What had happened is that a big swingers community down in Florida hooked up to my dating app and all of a sudden all these swingers from all over North America, again, mostly in the U.S., started leveraging my dating app to set up their swinging activities. So... Not swinging on a vine, but uh, swinging in terms of the uh, that culture of swingers. Now, I have nothing against swingers. I'm not a swinger personally, but it was a swinging thing that was occurring in the site. Now, you have to understand, back in those days, the, um, the culture vis-a-vis sexuality and swinging and so forth was a very different from, an, from what it is today. So I eventually shot, shut it down because I didn't want to become the swinging coder. I've talked about this story in the past. The reason I bring up this story again is because it, 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 this experience with the swingers taught me a lesson about SaaS development, app development. Now, SaaS is software as a service. It was a B2C or uh, I was going to make a bad joke. Anyway, it was a B2C, basically it was a business to client service where I, well, it was a dating site. But it became a dating site that was basically catering to the swinger community, and though it wasn't designed that way. And what it taught me about apps and business, well, I knew this lesson in business prior, but once again, it illustrated something that's very consistent when you start getting into the entrepreneur space. And that is, you never know where the business is going to take you. You never know what product or service is going to be successful or not, So with that in mind, that suggests strongly a strategy for to use when getting into business. And that strategy is get your app out, get your product out, get your service out as quickly as possible so you can gauge what the market response is going to be vis-a-vis the particular product or service that you're delivering. So with the dating site, the fact that it got invaded by you know, 10,000, 15,000, I, I assume of all 17,000 registered members that they weren't all swingers, but a strong, a strong percentage were. If I had chosen to pursue that swinging business, that swinging website, I would have been informed by my client base and they were paying. I would have been informed by the client base in terms of what functionality and features to add into the dating app. So in that case, it was kind of a generic generic dating app based on my own experience as a dater, but I wasn't a swinger. And I would have then, if I had decided to pursue this swinging business, I would have studied the swinging lifestyle, maybe spoken to a few swingers, got in the chat with some swingers in my community, and I would have said, hey, what do you need to, facil- to facilitate the swinging? What do you need? What features? What would you like to see in the app, in the site, in the dating app? What would make your swinging activities uh, fun for you? What would be required? And then the app would evolve according to the feedback in my experience in the marketplace with the app. So This applies not just to swinging websites, it applies to any type of business. You want to get it out quick and dirty, you want to have a very lightweight uh, code base, a very lightweight business model so that you can pivot. Because when you're starting a new business that you've never uh, jumped into before, you don't know what people are going to want. So in another SaaS business that is still up today, Studio Web, which has nothing to do with swinging and dating, it's actually an educational app and classroom management 
and student management tool that I, schools use to this day. That had a similar development cycle as the dating site in that I put out the basic concept, the, the, the app in its raw form based on some ideas in my head, some preconceived notions. Probably better to do a little study on that. But anyway, so I put it out there. And when I got my first couple of schools, that's when the app really began to evolve because I learned from the students and from the teachers and from the administration what the app really needed to do. So again, the emphasis here is that when you start off a new project in an industry you're not aware of, a new type of, uh, whether it be a new piece of software, whatever it is, any new business, you want to go in there light and nimble, light and nimble in terms of the code base, in terms of the business processes and so forth, because the clients ultimately will tell you how you should structure the business, how the software should be structured. That's pretty much it. So whether it be a date site, a dating site that gets invaded by swingers or an educational platform that initially I didn't even really conceive of it as a platform for schools. It did have a concept of a, a group. It didn't even have the concept of a classroom. It was just a group. And uh, I wasn't sure how the classrooms would have to be organized so, so that they aligned with the needs of particular districts out there. But again, getting it into the market very quickly and cheaply, uh, raw, crappy code, quick, to, easy to edit code base. Um, as you get, you know, your first classroom, your second school, your fifth school, your 70th school, your 10th, 20th district, and so on, it starts to, uh, this knowledge and experience accumulates. So, so now, StudioWeb, the app, is highly refined. When teachers and schools use it, they instantly like it. And it's not because my developers and the architecture was genius. It was because we just listened to the users. We just listened to what they wanted and what uh, they needed. And we just implemented it, keep refining it. And the way you go, you have a successful product. Now... I'll leave you with one tip. When you're developing software, a big part of the process is knowing what to leave out. You don't want to throw everything, every single capability, every single feature that you could ever think of or anybody ask or anybody might ask you for because you, you will end up with this huge big mess. Too many features destroys an app uh, as much as not enough features will destroy an application. So we would get suggestions, and I would not entertain every suggestion ever put to me, right? I entertained suggestions that I thought I had, a, I had a consensus in terms of what they wanted. Always compromises and all these type of things. Same thing with the dating app, right? I remember I started modifying. I did, actually. I started modifying and started changing functionality, adding to it and so on, based on what people were saying. But you have to be very careful because you can get pulled in 200 different ways and next thing you know, uh, you have uh, a big mess on your hand. Anyway, that's it. That's what my dating app taught me back in the 90s about software and uh, business in general. Although I had learned that in my non-tech business prior to that in terms of, uh, well, the things we just discussed. All right, I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in software development, freelancing, starting SaaS businesses, and a whole bunch of other things. I've been doing this for over three decades now, so I just share my knowledge. I hope you found this useful. If you did, let me know in the comments below. If you uh, like my hat, uh, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like my hat, give me two thumbs down to show your extreme disdain for my uh, hatware. And um, don't be afraid to share this with anybody. All right. Cheers.